Hi, I'm Michelle O. Oh. I'm the Education Librarian at NEIU. Uh, today I'm going to talk to you about resources for SPED 500 um, and how you can access them, and I will continue on. Um, here's our basic agenda, and this will be a brief video, and I have two other videos that I'll share that will be separate um, from this particular recording. Um, but the main things that I'm going to cover are library updates, um, definitions for research, and generally um, recommended resources for your assignment. Um, as far as library updates for fall, we actually have quite a few. Um, the library building is available for quiet study by reservation, and I'll include links to these um, services on your D2L page. Um, but we're currently scheduled to have slots available from 10 a.m. through 4 p.m. Monday through Friday, um, and those um, will be for single study only, so quiet study and independent, um, so no group study available, but that service will be available through the student union. Um, books and print materials are now available again um, through something that we're calling Grab and Go Services. So if you request a book through the NEIU library website um, or through our iShare catalog, um, those books will come in and you will receive a notification letting you know when they've arrived and we'll set them aside for you checked out in advance um, and they'll be available to you um, and you will, it'll be a no contact interaction. So the there will be specific instructions um, in the email, but it'll be placed on a table at the front of the library for you to grab and go. And additionally, although the library isn't having formal research and reference services in the building, we still have chat services available seven days a week um, from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Um, and there are other ways to reach out. Um, and as the education librarian, a main part of my job is to meet individually with students about research assignments like these, especially these big important ones that are that you're starting. Um, so I'm available through phone, email, Google Meet, um, and you can schedule an individual appointment with me. And for some people, an appointment might just be 15 minutes to deal with finding one or two specific articles. But for some people, it may take a little bit longer and might be a more involved conversation. Um, and that can really be um, a lot of times an hour is the longest we'll go, but um, just so that we can have a conversation that's more clear about what you need. Um, so moving on to definitions. Uh, I wanted to start with something that many of you might already be familiar with, but just so that we have a baseline understanding, um, I wanted to talk about peer-reviewed sources. So peer review just refers to the process that journals use to ensure they publish the best scholarship available. Um, peer reviewers are sometimes called referees, but really they're experts or researchers or professors in a field of study. And I think um, these days, the easiest way for us to think about peer review is the way that it touches our, our personal lives. And I think one easy thing to think about is with the current crisis and pandemic um, due to COVID-19, um, peer review is the process that ensures that if a, a study is published, the sample size is the right number of people, the methodology used to come up with results is appropriate. Um, so that is part of the reason that peer review is such an important process, and especially in education research, we also want to make sure that we're not just publishing results that, that uh, focus on one school district in one part of the country, but that those results are maybe replicable a a across a larger group or the entire country or different races of students and genders, etc. So moving on, um, for your assignment, you will be tasked with finding things called primary and empirical sources. Um, and those are original sources authored by the in individuals who conducted the research. Um, easy ways to identify primary sources when you do a search for articles um, are to look for terms such as study um, or to find a number of participants. Um, and that'll often be designated by the symbol N equals. So it'll say like N equals 1200 students, etc. Um, there will also be a data gathering method such as a test, survey, interviews, observation checklist, um, and there are other ways to, to gather data, but those are some examples. 
And then also there will be a section on results discussing how the results um, of the study were interpreted. And I will pull up an example article here. And here's an article called Randomized Evaluation of Peer Support Arrangements to Support the Inclusion of High School Students with Severe Disabilities. Um, and you'll see that these are all the authors. Um, these superscripts, one, two, two, refer to the institutions that they're associated with. So you'll see here they're um, likely professors and graduate students for, from Vanderbilt University or University of Wisconsin-Madison. And then here we see an abstract and some of the um, hints that stick out here again um, is we see the term uh, the number of participants here n equals 48 um, and findings okay so i will go back to our presentation and um, i'd like to talk further about qualitative and quantitative studies so um, I think this is pretty straightforward, but quantitative studies gather numeric data through testing um, and qualitative studies gather information through focus groups or interviews or case studies. Um, and you can see in, there's a little cartoon here, which part of it is blocked, but um, it's an example of quantitative versus quantitative methods. And in the first um, box, you see it says, hmm, only one in 30 take the free ice cream. Interesting, right? So they're, they're seeing how many people will do a specific action. And then in the qualitative methods box, it says, what did you feel when you saw the free ice cream? And why was that? Um, excited, a little scared. Um, and this sort of describes the kind of outcomes that you're looking for with these different studies. Um, quantitative methods are really helpful in trying to get large sample sizes, find out what works across large groups of people. Um, and quantitative, qualitative methods are looking at um, the experiences and, and often are looking for ways to think about those larger studies. Like, what are we looking for? Um, okay. Then secondary sources, those are articles that are written about other sources, for example, literature reviews and reports on the state of education. Um, a lot of times what they do is they provide information based on primary study sources. Um, and another term that um, Professor Criticos often will, will share is the term empirical, and that's another way of thinking about primary sources. So those are studies that present empirical evidence. So the study has been done by the individuals and is presenting it. Um, and here's our example article for that, for a secondary source, so one that's looking at primary research and um, summarizing it. Something confusing about it is that um, they can both be peer reviewed and they both um, look very similar. So if you look at this article, there's authors, titles, abstracts, and they are fairly involved. Um, so I think I think the most important thing is to just have an understanding of the difference between the two categories so that you can find those when you're searching because there's not a clear um, checkbox in our databases that distinguish those kinds of sources from one another. All right. And then to choose the right search tool, um, there's a lot of different tools that you could use. Um, I think search engines on the general web like google and bing and yahoo are really helpful i think they're good for finding news and websites that have relevant government data and statistics so for many education students good information from the department of education or the brookings institute um, but what we want to refer you to is education databases such as the education resource information center and education abstracts and i also have those linked in the d2l page for you um, and what they are very good at doing is finding peer-reviewed studies just on education. And so you don't have to sift through um, studies that may refer to other types of um, sciences, like maybe a study on um, psychology that's more focused on the psychology than the education portion. Um, and 
in the video that I've shared, in addition to this one, there's one about searching library databases. It's searching a different database called Academic Search Ultimate, which actually would work for this project. Um, but I do want to refer you um, and recommend Eric and Education Abstracts because there's much more education focused. But the skills that you use to search those databases are transferable to any database. Um, and then something else I want to point out um, is that in ERIC, which I think is the most comprehensive education database available to us, um, there's different kinds of documents. Some are called ERIC documents. So those are non-journal items, research reports, conference papers, and even lesson plans. Um, but the important thing to note there is that they're not um, peer-reviewed journal articles. And then ERIC journals, which will be designated by an EJ, um, are journal articles that are important to the field or publications from professional journals. Um, so I'm going to end there. Um, I will share relevant ring links for you. Um, but the thing I want to emphasize the most um, is that um, if you have any questions, there's still a lot of ways to get help, even though we're all at home and things are so different right now. Um, but start by emailing me. I am the librarian for this course and for the education department. Um, I'm available at m-oh at neiu.edu. I'm happy to meet individually with you and schedule a research consultation. Um, and you can always reach out via our live chat service Monday through Friday, 9 to 9. Um, I wish you all the best. I know many of you are starting your program and we're so happy that you're here. Um, and we hope to see you in person one day. Okay, take care.